I'll come to Roger from Sky. Hi, thanks. Hi, Miguel. Good Hi. to see you. Hi, right, first of all, um, as we come to the end of this season, just, just looking back to the end of last season when you finished with, with an FA Cup and everything looked, looked very positive, would you say that in terms of the vision you have for this club and what you want to build, you're further along the line in terms of progress, or would you say that this year has perhaps been a difficult step back almost? Well, if you say a step back because we haven't won a title, um, then it has to be related. Um, in the league, we have two more points than last season, but it's nowhere near where we want to be. The fact that we haven't have a title so close to grab because we are not in the Europa League final um, makes it really difficult to see more positives. But we were knocked out in the last 16 in the Europa League last season. And there is a lot of things that have been done that they were very necessary in this season um, that are not related to... Um, to results, but um, at the end of the day, we are here to um, to win. Um, I know it's, it's not been the easiest for you having to talk about things like takeovers or something. If I can just ask you one question, because Daniel Lech has talked about his bid being rejected. Are you hopeful now that a bid's been rejected now that this issue can just now be parked and you can just focus and, and the club can just focus on what it needs to do in terms of progress now? I really hope so, because I think um, it's been very clear. Um, where the owners are standing. Um, I think I've been clear to give my view on the situation and just for the for the benefit of the club, which I think is the only interest that everybody that supports really the club um, should be aiming, is to get the unity and the togetherness that we need um, to be back where we want. That's all. And you talked about, obviously now you think about what the plans are going forward for the future and the players will leave and, and so on like that. Can I ask you about Joe Willock, who's been fantastic on, in his loan spell? Is he part of those long-term plans that, that you have? And do you see him coming back and playing a part at the club next season? Yes, and I'm really happy that uh, things have gone so well for him because of the potential that Jot had. Um, I think it was great for him to go away and have a different experience. Um, he has grabbed that opportunity in a really positive and remarkable way and uh, he will be back with us. We'll have those conversations with him and, um, and plan the next uh, few years for him. And of course this game, the final game of the season, you're going to have fans back in. It's been a difficult year for them, frustrating year for them. What sort of um, response or what sort of atmosphere are you expecting? at the Emirates for this last game of the season? That they haven't been at the stadium for a long time, we haven't been able to be together, so hopefully a really positive atmosphere, trying to support the team and the team trying to give them some joy and, um, and win the game. Um, in terms of bringing them some sort of joy, um, it's, it's not a title or anything, but how much do you think they will be determined for Arsenal to get the win and potentially finish above Tottenham this season, just give them that small bit of pleasure, something to shout about in North London. Anything that is in our hands um, to make them happy and um, and to help us to be in a better place than we are today, it's all positive. Thanks a lot, Miguel. Thank you. Thank you. George, BBC. Thanks, Mark. Um, Mikel, I know, I know the table's over 38 games, but have you seen the last 23 matches of your league form and where that puts you in the league? You will be second. Yeah. I mean, what do you make of that? Because that is, considering your first start of the season, that's quite, quite good, isn't it? Yes, it is very good, but as you said, the league is played in 38 games. Uh, but at least it shows that, uh, that we are able to do it. Um, and if we get a little bit more normal context, more normal <laughs> situations, um, I'm very positive about uh, what we can do. But um, at the end of the day, we are judge of what we've done in the whole season and, um, and it's not for sure where we want to be. Can you work out, when you look back at this season, I, I remember I mentioned that it really was that, that first, that period in November, is, that really has cost you, hasn't it? Considering how well you've done over the last 23 games. Yes, it's a lot of things from September to December that are contributing to to that. I don't just believe in it's just uh, an issue. There were a, a lot of things uh, in that period. Will them issues be back again next season or are they eliminated no. for good? You, you sound like you know what the issue was back then. Well, this is my job. <laughs> 
to identify, to be very critical with myself first and then try to analyze and, and find the why things happened, whether it's negative or positive. So if it's positive, let's, let's keep doing a lot of the good things that we are doing. Um, Joe Willett, so just to confirm, he's definitely going to be an Arsenal player next season. He won't be going out on loan. Well, for sure, because he's got a contract and he's going to be here. So that's for sure. He's, he's put a few extra pounds on these with all his goals. He's put a few extra pounds <laughs> on his uh, transfer fee, possibly. And, uh, and he got the responsibility and the task to go to Newcastle to help them um, go where they want. And I'm telling you, because I spoke with the coaching staff, they're extremely happy because he was a key part of contributing um, to get the objective that they had. So that's, um, that's a real positive for him. Um, Hector Bellerin, I know he's injured, but what will Sunday be? Is that going to be his last? last appearance at the Emirates possibly or do you hope he stays Hector is not fit so he won't be play, playing the last game and um, like everybody that has a contract uh, George um, he remains here ok and just sorry I know he's not your player but it's going to be Sergio Aguero's last game mm-hmm. um, on Sunday can you just give us an appreciation of how good he was from your time at Man City please and also the joy to work with him uh, his character, his personality, is a lovable man, and then yeah, one of the best talents that um, I've seen. What he's done in this league for um, for so long and scoring the amount of goals that he's done, I think he was a player that contributed to to change the perception of English football um, in different countries. And uh, I want for the for Manchester City. I think again, I think he was a big contributor of changing the history, the mentality, and the winning um, years that they had uh, after that. Thanks very much. Thanks for your Thank you. questions this season. Thank you. Ian talks more. Hi Michael. Last Hi. one of the season. <laughs> How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. What do you think of the? Um Europa Conference League or the UEFA Conference League because if you do finish by Spurs you could finish seventh and you could be in that tournament next season I know it's not the Champions League or the Europa League what, what are you, what's your thoughts on it? Well it's a new competition so I don't know um, really well uh, what it would happen first of all let's try to finish as high as possible and after we would determine um, if we are involved uh, what's the best way to do it in some in some ways, it's been looked down upon by people. I mean, you know, do we need a third European competition, for example? Well, we have experienced uh, in the last few years as well how tough uh, being in, in the Europa League is with the amount of games that you play and, and the short turnaround that you have all the time in the Premier League. I think there is a, a lot of history there with teams that have been involved in Europa League. <laughs> the negative consequences that that, that has in the, in the Premier League uh, positions. But um, we tried to give it the best possible go. We came a little bit short, and um, but this club has to be in Europe. How difficult is your team selection on Sunday? Because from the outside, people are saying, well, you know, are Arsenal going to build a team for the future around the likes of Kieran Tierney, Bukayo Saka, Emil Smith Rowe? And on the other hand, there are a few good buys that might need to be sent to players like David Luiz, possibly William, as you said there, maybe Hector Bellerin. Who knows? I mean. Um, so how difficult is somebody's team selection for you? Team selection is just uh, the best possible selection to win the game. And what is going to happen afterwards, it's uh, part of the future. And what we have to try to control is um, is what happens uh, on the day. Do you, do you have a lot of difficult conversations coming up? I mean, I'm thinking of players like Edin Ketty, who is going to want to play more football next season. He has this. Um, I don't know whether you want to keep one, I'm not going to ask you that, but with players like that, do you have difficult conversations in the next few weeks? Well, we have a lot of conversations that already happened and some more that uh, have to happen. Difficult or not, we have to face them and uh, we have to be able to tell each other what uh, our feelings are and then try to make the right decisions. Fans will ask whether finishing 7th, 8th or ninth, whether that is good enough for a team as big as Arsenal. What would your response be? No. So, uh, wherever it is, it's a season of underachievement, yeah? It's not where we want to be, uh, Ian. Okay. And finally, you've spoken before about how important your family are to you. Um, 
you're going to the last game of the season. I guess that after that, there's a chance for you to repay them a bit, Mikhail, with a bit of family time. Are you actually going to be able to get away this summer or with the Euros on? Are uh, the family and the dog going to be put in one room and you're going to be watching Spain and England in the other room? No, you have to find a balance. Um, there is a, a lot of work to do, reflection to do, a lot of decisions to be made, and uh, it would take time to do that. But at the same time as well, you have to disconnect. It's been almost two years with no break, and um, and they deserve some time with us. And I think uh, our bodies and minds as well, they need a rest to be more efficient and um, and have more clarity in our vision. I must ask, which flag is in the Mikel Arteta house? The Spanish one or the English one? Sorry? Which flag for the Euros were you flying the Arteta house, the English one or the Spanish one? I would have both and, and as well obviously supporting as well a lot of the players that we have here. They would be representing their country and um, we want the best for them. Thanks for being a great sport all season. Okay, thanks Ian. Thanks guys. Right, we go on to the section for 10.30 Friday night.